So I think there's uh, somewhat of a misunderstanding here in China that when we talk about science, it's all about attacking a well-defined goal. Mm -hmm. This is not the great, it is good science, but not the greatest science. Mm -hmm. The greatest science is when you define your own goal. Uh, I think the only thing we need is to have a somewhat a longer term goal that's uh, most important and uh, not just for some short term uh, visibility mm -hmm. uh, but also it's uh, kind of uh, very important to give the power uh, to younger scientists and to not to let science uh, be dominated by uh, just by a few uh, but uh, try to encourage truly grassroots uh, discoveries mm -hmm. and once they make uh, such discoveries uh, we also need to recognize them. So what, that's do you mean, what do you mean? I mean, like, come on, what do you mean by give power to the young scientists? Uh, if we at Stanford University uh, hire a young assistant professor uh, to, uh, let's say, Stanford University, mm -hmm. uh, we have a clock of about seven years uh, called the tenure clock. Mm -hmm. So they're closely examined and, uh, and uh, they uh, will only be uh, decided whether they can get a tenure position at my department after seven years. Uh, let's say if you're a young scientist, you, uh, so then naturally the decisions are made by the senior colleagues, right? So maybe you say, oh, one thing I can do is I write a, a lot of papers, uh, but then I get my senior colleagues to sign their name on it, and maybe at the tenure review committee they will uh, give me a good word. But this is kind of strongly viewed uh, as a negative indicator. Yeah. If you, uh, a young assistant professor needs to be completely on his own, uh, he has to develop his own research program, yeah. and it's actively discouraged that he work with a senior scientist uh, in the same department. So I think there's actually a lot of this going on in, in China, that yeah. a young scientist uh, makes uh, the original discovery, but the senior scientist uh, signs uh, the on name. the table. Yeah. Then people get confused who made right. the original contribution. But you know it's very hard to change a tradition. Yeah, but uh, if, you, uh, if you make such a rule, uh, and by the time you review for mm. tenure, uh, I think uh, then, then, then uh, I think it's at least the, the first step. So I think that is perhaps the most important, because in the end of the day, uh, perhaps we should expect the greatest discoveries should be made by young younger people, mm. right? So, so we should do everything possible to nurture young scientists. And have you and realized that you are no, no longer a young scientist yeah, anymore? Yeah, so that's why I can play a role of senior scientist and to, to promote if, if somebody, uh, some mm. young scientist make a discovery, uh, I, uh, I can help him by trying uh, to make his work more visible on the international stage. Professor Zhang, ultimately, as a great scientist, I wouldn't say the scientist who received Nobel Prize or this and that, but as a great scientist in your heart, what are the qualities? How much does he or she need to fight against his or her own selfishness, a little smallness? Yeah, just like I said, the best way to get recognized if, is that when you do your most original piece of work. Mm. So I think uh, in that uh, sense, the interests are fully aligned. But what about the personality-wise? Yeah. How much do you have to fight against yourself? I have also struggled through during the uh, period when I was a young scientist growing up. Uh, I, uh, there were moments that I also get very frustrated. But I, overall, I think the scientific uh, community uh, works uh, in the sense that uh, truly groundbreaking work will get eventually recognized. You work so hard for decades yeah. in your own research. Yeah. You even try to get away from yeah. the crowd yeah. in order to find a yeah. path yeah. of your own. Yeah. 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 But when was that moment yeah. that you realized yeah. this is it? Yeah, so this is a process of uh, solitude. You are accompanied only by solitude. Do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah. At uh, times I, yeah, or all at the times, time? Uh, but at a lot of times you feel that uh, you are really uh, embarking on a lonely uh, journey. Uh, but uh, there's a very uh, novel way to search for the truth, mm. and that is to search for the truth inspired by beauty. Mm. And that is uh, something that I really learned from my own mentor, Professor Chen Ying Yang, that I was uh, a student when he mentored me that there's, uh, uh, when you uh, dream about uh, a theory, uh, when it is uh, truly beautiful, uh, which is something that you can sense, 
and a sense that can accompany you on mm -hmm. your lonely journey uh, in searching for the truth, uh, that it's, uh, you, you feel that uh, instinctively that uh, there's something right about it. And I it is that. even such that. a great uh, pleasure that if you can dream about uh, something uh, inspired by beauty, but nature actually recognizes that. Yeah. This is maybe the greatest uh, satisfaction a scientist can have. I saw the lights in your eyes when yeah. you were talking about the yeah. beauty of science, yeah. Yeah. and your tone suddenly softened up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. some, it really reflects yeah. something. Yeah. But, yeah. but when you uh, talk, I hope uh, young scientists can listen to our conversation and be inspired by it. I hope so. But when you talk about beauty, yeah. What exactly is it? Uh, so when we talk about uh, poetry, for example, a few very simple sentences can capture uh, such complex emotions. Mm -hmm. So the world is very complex, uh, but it is remarkable that we can write down on the back of an envelope a few equations that describe something to the smallest of the atoms and to the vastness of the universe. For example, E equals to MC squared is something like that. Uh, to the, it's valid mm. to the smallest of the atom and to the vastness of the uh, universe. Mm. So there's a poet, uh, William Blake, he says, to see the world in a grain of sand and to hold infinity in one hour. Mm. So this is, uh, I think, the same sense of beauty that you get by reading a poetry that uh, such a complex emotion can be captured by a few lines. Mm. Uh, and uh, we capture the complexity of the universe with few simple equations. Mm. And this is beauty. Are you always that romantic, Professor John? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think, uh, uh, as we said, in the, on the path towards searching for the truth, uh, you are often uh, times accompanied by extreme solitude. And this sense of scientific romance can serve you very well on yeah. your early journey. So poetry is the companion? There's a deep uh, rooted conviction that if you have seen in the past uh, the great giants of uh, theoretical physicists, mm -hmm. uh, they have been able to uh, conceive uh, beautiful ideas, uh, but nature recognized that. Mm -hmm. And so it is such a noble endeavor that, uh, that uh, keeps us going. Even Was there a moment? The, uh, we, we were hosting a party uh, at our home but uh, due to some uh, uh, personal uh, friend's health, uh, my wife had to leave, and I have to uh, entertain the guest by cooking barbecue uh, <laughs> at home. So, but when you cook barbecue, when you do the beef well, uh, it has to be a little bit well done on the outside, but very rare on the inside. And this actually is the idea of a topological insulator. It oh. is conducting on the surface, uh, but insulating in the bulk. So, so actually it was at that party, even though there was a lot of guests uh, around, you know, scientists uh, can sometimes wander off uh, into a strange direction, even though yeah. there was many guests around, I, I suddenly get the idea. I hope the guests crucial. can still be served with good barbecue, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. not burned up one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did they have a good dinner? Yeah, they had a very good dinner. Oh, terrific. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, this is easier said than done. Yeah. That so was eureka moment. Yes, eureka moment, as you say. But that is based on years and probably yeah, decades yeah, of yeah, research. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. strenuous process. Yeah, yeah. How but are you going to? You can how can you enjoy? It? Yes, I, I mean, how can you, you can find, find beauty? beauty uh, that's, and uh, keep on finding beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, but it's uh, a feeling that's hard to de describe. But yeah. it's really uh, one of the most uh, uh, noble endeavor mm. that uh, we embark on to find the laws of nature uh, by searching for beauty. And Professor Zhang, now you are, of course, well known for your theory. Yeah, yeah. It's well tested on a global scale. Yeah. You got your recognition. Yeah. But that is also another Eureka moment, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's a moment of look at yourself. You also asked about the Nobel Prize, but I think that the greatest reward for a scientist uh, is to find that uh, you, you can conceive an idea uh, purely as an uh, idea in your brain, mm. uh, but uh, eventually nature recognized that. Yeah. This, I think, is the uh, highest possible recognition a scientist can receive. Yeah, but you know, you are here yeah. um, with great achievements, mm. but there are many others that are struggling yeah. still along the way. Okay, these are the science areas in which not many people would focus on. Yeah. But remember yesterday yeah. at the Ball Forum, I was yeah. hosting this panel, you yeah. were uh, kindly in, uh, joining us yeah. Uh, yeah. in the panel. It was all about in artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody jam on it. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, it would be amazing yeah. 
a scientist would be able to still stay there, yeah. not coming all the way to join the crowd. Yeah, yeah. What does it take? Uh, actually, uh, when you look at the history of artificial intelligence, uh, some of the major contribution to that, fundamental ideas, was done by my Physicist, colleagues, uh, yes. by theoretical physicists, such as Boltzmann and uh, Hopfield and Gibbs. So statistical physics uh, actually looks at nature, uh, typically uh, consisting of large aggregates yeah. of uh, fundamental particles. But people know Elon Musk, people know, you know the Steve Jobs, but they yeah. don't know your colleagues. Uh, they should. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that is uh, somewhat tragic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, we should value ideas uh, a lot more uh, compared to those uh, who uh, people who contribute the, the original ideas mm -hmm. uh, rather than those who implement it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think today, I think there's a general shallowness uh, in the recognition that people only look at people who walk the last mile, but forget about all the trainers. A path that has been crossed by mm. the great pioneers of the past. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, but uh, in recognizing those geniuses, uh, actually inspire you more to make your own original discoveries. Mm. And they have always been the guiding lights of my life. Were they? Yeah. You read all their stories? Yeah. Uh, you talk about moments of the Eureka, yeah. but there has always also been moments of uh, weakness uh, when I was uh, confused about the directions. So in, uh, I grew up in, in China uh, I, during the uh, harsh uh, cultural revolution. But in 1978, uh, I was uh, uh, fortunate to go to uh, college, without, uh, pass the college entrance exam mm -hmm. without ever going to high school. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was admitted into Fudan University. But one semester later, I was sent to uh, Germany. Uh, to study. Wow, what a lucky guy. Yeah, but, but uh, I was, uh, uh, after one semester of studying in Germany, I get confused because uh, theoretical physics is such a, a rare major mm. that there's not much job opportunities. And when I look around, most of my friends are switching uh, to other fields. Uh, so I got very confused uh, what I should do uh, with my life, even yes. though I know about the dream of Einstein, of the brain unification but I still, there's a practical aspect of life. So I was uh, wandering around and I was touring Germany and I uh, landed at a beautiful university town called Göttingen. Mm -hmm. So they're the greatest uh, uh, scientists have uh, lived, uh, worked and uh, they passed away also there, like yes. Friedrich Gauss, Riemann, uh, Max Born and Otto Hahn. So I visited their uh, graveyard uh, where all those great uh, scientists were buried. And their gravestones are very, very simple. Uh, it has their name, their birth year, and the year of their passing. Mm -hmm. But everyone has one formula carved onto their gravestone. And that is the moment I realized that if you want to leave something behind, this is the best way to leave something behind. Oh, it's such a touching story. Yeah.